Okay, now we look into the uh, second part, which is uh, normal and tangential coordinates. We still on the uh, kinematics of particle for the Cobitinia motion. Normal and tangential coordinates. Okay, in 2001, a race scheduled at Texas Motor Speedway was cancelled because of the normal acceleration were too high and caused some drivers to experience excessive G load or G forces. Okay, similar to the uh, amount of uh, G force experienced by the fighter pilots. And uh, due to that uh, G loads, uh, G forces, the uh, driver might uh, pass out during the race. So that is uh, very dangerous. So what, what are some things that could be done to solve this particular problem? Okay, some possibilities is to reduce the allowed speed. Okay? Reduce the allowed speed when entering or at uh, the point uh, at which uh, the curve of the corner. Okay, second one is to increase the turn radius. Okay? That could be, uh, will cause you arm and leg. Okay? Because it is very difficult and very costly. Uh, everything needs to be redesigned and rebuilt again. Okay? Have the racer wear G suit. I think it is uh, most uh, the, the quickest thing that they can uh, 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 do to to meet this uh, requirement. As, uh, apart from uh, reduce the allowed speed. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, second thing is uh, if you have an idea of the path of of a vehicle or object, it is often convenient to analyze the motion using tangential and normal component, sometimes called uh, path coordinate. Okay, and like this one, the, the tube, okay, it is rotating inside this uh, uh, container, okay, it is fixed at one uh, central uh, point, uh, axis, okay, axis of rotation, it just it is fixed. And it is just rotating. However, on this uh, this part here, the team part, okay, we have a roller coaster here that it go up, turn at very uh, high angle and uh, make a loop uh, after a loop. So the motion is a very uh, very dynamic. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> the tangential direction, uh, normally we denote it as uh, E with subscript T. T stands for tangent, tangential. It's tangent to the path of the particle. This velocity vector of a particle is in the this direction. Okay, there is the tangential uh, component of this particular lines. <clears throat> and if you want to calculate the velocity, uh, the velocity vector of that particular point here, then you will have your magnitude of uh, V and then uh, the uh, uh, unit vector of the uh, respective uh, direction, okay, for this respective uh, velocity, okay. And we also have the uh, 90 degrees of from this uh, tangential, we have the normal component of it. Okay, the normal direction is perpendicular to uh, the tangential component of this and points towards the inside of the curve. Okay, point towards the inside, not going outside. And the acceleration can have component in both uh, 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 normal and tangential direction, okay? like so. Okay. For velocity, we only have the tangential velocity, but for uh, acceleration, we have uh, two components: tangential and normal. Okay, to derive the acceleration vector in tangential and normal component, define the motion of a particle as shown in this particular figure. 
Okay, here you can see that uh, there is a tangential component, there is a normal component, and here we have the tangential component at P prime. Okay, at this point we should also have uh, the uh, normal component pointing to this uh, center. Uh, sorry, pointing towards the inside of this particular curve. ET and ET prime, these two, are tangential unit vector for the particle part at P and P prime, prime respectively, when drawn with respect to the same origin. Okay? So if we are looking at the same uh, origin, like so, we assume that uh, from the same origin, like, like this, okay? Then uh, delta E T is equal to delta, sorry, delta E T is equal to E T prime minus E T. And the angle between them is the, the, and theta, delta theta is the angle between them. Okay. And you can uh, express like this. Okay. <clears throat> With the velocity vector expressed as uh, v equal to v times the vector of uh, t, tangential of it, then the, the particle acceleration may be written as uh, like so. We have the tangential component and we have also, uh, yeah, we have the tangential uh, component of this uh, particular vector. Okay, but the the normal component, uh, it is going to be like this, eh? where we <coughs> we can later uh, after substituting this uh, this part. Okay, uh, first we have uh, a equal to dv dt, and you can uh, further uh, do the chain rule of this one. So first you have a d dv dt of uh, e times t and then you differentiate uh, you have v then you differentiate this uh, et okay part by part then you, you have uh, basically two parts because you have two components here then you further uh, expand this uh, the second term here where uh, uh, de over dt is it can be expanded as uh, de over d theta times d theta over ds times ds over dt. Okay, where from here we can see that uh, de over d theta is actually uh, en, okay, the normal component of uh, vector, and then uh, ds is equal to uh, uh, rho d theta. Or we can say that uh, uh, ds over d theta is equal to rho. Okay, rho is something to do with the uh, uh, physically it is the 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 length. Okay, like the radius lah. Okay, and ds dt you can say uh, very simple that is a uh, uh, like what we have uh, previously uh, uh, looking at, uh, it is a V, yeah, velocity. So you can uh, use all this information, substitute into this uh, formula up here, then finally you can have like this. Okay. So dv dt is uh, times et plus v square. Okay. Because ds dt is v, and here you have another v, so that's why it is v square and then ds d theta is equal to rho however here we have d theta over ds so it is inverse so rho become uh, below and like so for this one uh, this is uh, d this over this one so this is what uh, <coughs> you can see from this uh, substitution 
okay, the tangential component of acceleration reflect change of speed and the normal component reflect change of direction. The tangential component may be positive or negative. The normal component always point towards center of the path curve. Okay, if you have a multiple curve, then the center will be uh, different. Lah. Okay, a relation for tangential and normal acceleration also apply for particle moving along a space curve. Okay, like this. So you have uh, one curve here and then another one here. So it is also uh, can be applied. Eh? The plane containing uh, tangential and normal unit vector is, is called the osculating plane. This osculating plane. The normal to the osculating plane is found from uh, this one. So uh, En is the principal normal and Bn, uh, the, the one that is pointing out of this oscillating plane, we call it the binormal. Acceleration has no component along the binormal. Okay, on the first uh, example here, the boat is traveling along the circular path with a speed of b equal to 0.0625 t square okay, uh, in meter per second. And uh, where t is in seconds, and for this particular problem, we want to determine the magnitude of its acceleration when t is equal to 10 seconds. Okay, this is the uh, path of this particular boat is moving uh, circular with a radius of uh, 40 meter. Okay, okay uh, to solve this particular problem, we look into the first is uh, the tangential uh, acceleration of this. And we know that uh, AT is equal to V dot. Okay, what is V dot? V dot is the change of velocity with respect to time, where we can also say it is a dV over dT. Lah. Okay dv dt we can further expand it uh, we we because we have the what is v v is given this this one up here so just plug in and just do the uh, differentiation okay then uh, write this then substitute the value of t equal to 10 seconds because we want to be, determine the magnitude of the acceleration when t equal to 10 seconds Okay, so just put t is equal to 10, then we have uh, the tangential acceleration is equal to 1.25 meter per second square. Okay, we are uh, all halfway done. Okay, now we, we need to also look into the normal acceleration. What is normal acceleration? Normal acceleration from our previous uh, derivation, we can see that it is equal to v square over rho. Okay. And uh, v square is given here. V is this one square, and uh, rho is given uh, forty meter. Okay, just plug in the value and also uh, put the value of t, which is equal to ten second. Then you will get your normal acceleration is zero point nine seven six six meter per second square, and then uh, to to get into the magnitude of the acceleration because it is the magnitude then uh, you need to uh, take both part together okay the tangential and the normal component okay uh, like a normal uh, uh, like when, when you want to calculate the uh, magnitude of of any vectors okay and then you arrive with a 1.59 meter per second square Okay, moving on to the second example. If a derailed car decelerates uniformly, okay, remember uniformly eh, along the curved road from 25 meter per second to A at A, okay, at A, then to 15 meter per second at C, C is here. Okay, we need to determine the acceleration of the car at B. Okay, remember that. This, this particular problem, the acceleration is a deceleration is a, a uniformly uniform. Okay, 
from the previous uh, derivation, we we can we so we have this uh, particular formula, okay, where uh, we can use it to calculate the velocity at point C, okay, uh, where we have a V C equal to V A, and then we have a two A S C and S A. Uh, all almost all of this uh, item is uh, given here, except for A T. Yeah. Uh, because that is what we want to find out. Okay, BC is given uh, 15, VA is 25, uh, because it is a decelerate. Huh? You can see that uh, this value is uh, much uh, lower than this. Okay, then 2, okay, uh, AT is uh, the unknown that we want to determine. Uh, then uh, SC, okay, SC is equal to uh, uh, sorry, SC is the uh, 250 plus 50 is equal to 300 meter uh, minus zero because we start from here. Eh? Okay, then you got your AT equal to minus 0 0.66667 meter per second square. Okay, moving on uh, to calculate the velocity at point B. Okay, point B, and then we we have uh, the, the same approach uh, like before. Uh, however, in, in this case, uh, we don't have the value of VB. VB is the one that we want to determine. Uh, we have the value of VA, which is uh, 25. And we know that uh, 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 the AT, the tangential component, uh, for the uh, deceleration because it's minus eh? deceleration is like so that we have calculated just now and the distance from A to B is 20, uh, 250 meter and uh, at A it is uh, measured as zero lah. so you got your VB is equal to 17.08 uh, meter per second okay now uh, we want to calculate what is the uh, uh, acceleration, uh, the normal acceleration at point B, okay, uh, because we already calculate what is BB, so you can uh, put the value of BB and then rho is given here, rho at B, which is 300 meter, so you get uh, it is 0 0.9722 meter per second square, okay, and then uh, to calculate this, uh, this, uh, Acceleration, the total, uh, the, the the magnitude of the acceleration, uh, you have to take both uh, the normal component and the tangential component. And you notice that uh, the tangential component from A to C, it is the same. Uh, the tangential component is the same because it is uniformly, okay, decelerate uniformly. However, uh, the normal component is not the same because at point B, the row B is 300 meter. At C, it will be different value. At A, the, the row A will be different value. So, uh, uh, the magnitude uh, at A, B and C will not be the same. That's due to the fact that the normal acceleration is changing at these three positions. However, the tangential is the same. Okay. Thank you.